is Jeremiah. He's back. We, we know what we're doing today. Don't get uh, confused here. We turn to Matthew 10, which is the Great Commission, where you get out there and you save souls. And uh, these gentlemen are, are not to go to the Gentiles or to the north, but just basically the homeboys, which is pretty, pretty much, uh, I would probably say, um, Judah, Benjamin, and probably the Levites. But let's let that go for now. And uh, we just went to these 12 gentlemen. And we're, we're number 13. <laughs> we're, we're being added here as Gentiles uh, ourselves. And they did finally reach us. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Let's go. For the remission of sins. Jeremiah, are you on fire? We, 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 we've got a lot of work here. Work is fire. If your work is in sound doctrine, then it's fire. We just read that beautiful scripture where Paul says, I, I, you, you, I have made fully known uh, my teachings, uh, sound doctrine. So uh, we, we, we fully know the basics of, of sound doctrine and Christianity. It's not that difficult. Now, we can make, it can get difficult. What I'm going to get into right now can get you a little confused, but I want you to pay attention anyway. We're starting to combine subjects now. The subject in Matthew 10 is basically evangelism. Get out there, get off your can, and go save people and love them. And get off your butt. Let's put it in American terminology. And and uh, what's going on here is, is he's telling them what to do when you get out there. Cleanse the lepers, heal people, preach the gospel, save souls. Tell them the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, all of you, um, uh, and so forth. And don't bring a purse with you or a wallet. People are going to take care of you everywhere you go. If people don't, if people don't receive the gospel, just tell them goodbye. Leave them alone. Shake the dust off your feet. Be, be, be wise. Use your head, but be harmless. And, and, and all of these beautiful things that the master is sharing here. I want to, I want to skip all of that right now. Of course, it's a beautiful part here where he says, "Don't fear them," and, and the Lord has the hairs of your head numbered. What translated means, I, I know everything about you. Don't, don't you worry about being destroyed or, or, or you know, being hurt uh, horribly or something. Just uh, uh, everyone dies anyway. You know, you, 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 need to be re you need to be resurrected whether you were tortured or not. That, that's the point here, kind of. You know, it doesn't really matter what happens to you in, in terms of ultimately because everybody dies and needs to be reborn. Every, everyone needs to to have God fix them back up again. If indeed they're going to be brought back to life, correct? Let's get to this uh, number. Let's go to the second one first. Uh, I have agape and beauty, and then we have agape and living bread, okay? And let's go to agape and living bread first. And then I'll, I'll come, I'll, I want to go, uh, just touch on this as I turn to the page. I may as well use it. He that loveth, he that taketh, he that findeth. This is the issue here. Interesting how the Lord uses he that, he that, or rather it's more along the lines of he that and he that, he that findeth. Well, the Lord's grammar is always perfect. There's no better person to study grammar than this gentleman here, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ here. There's no better person that's ever lived. For those of you who haven't noticed, the grammar is absolutely perfect every time. He is the standard for grammar. He doesn't like using a lot of big words um, in general, like Paul does every now and then. And that makes him in many ways a superior writer to anyone because you don't have to go to a dictionary and a glossary or anything with, with the master very much at all. And it makes it better for everyone to read. Uh, Paul takes you up another notch in terms of vocabulary and stuff. And, and, and the Lord provides time and dictionaries for us so we can figure out Paul, right? It's not something that, that, that we, can't, you know, we can't handle. In, 
imputation and all these terms. Now let, 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 let's get to he that. He that loveth and he that taketh and he that findeth. That's what I want to talk about. And I'm going to come back to this because I want to go to agape and love, which agape and uh, beauty, which is an easy, an easy, easy lesson. This is, this is a little more difficult. It's a little more challenging for you to concentrate and think on this subject right here, okay? And I'm going to put this probably under living bread. We could put it under agape too. Because it's not necessarily one subject. When you start studying your Bible and you combine subjects, that's when you start really understanding your Bible. If I tell you that God is high love and high truth, that's beautiful and, and it's good for you, right? It's, it's, you know high love and you know high truth. That, that, that agape love is not animal affection. It's not your neighbor's affection. It's, it's, it's constant, steady devotion with emotion with a lot of thinking. As a matter of fact, it can give the appearance that there might be a little too much thinking. However, that should let you know that love, that's really high love, is not, is not into a lot of talk. Not into a lot of, you know, high, over-emotional hysteria, uh, epileptic emotion and so forth. You know, ah, it's, that's not love. You know, love is I'm sitting here, I'm with you, and I'm not going to say anything. Very much at all. I'm just with you. And, and as they say in America, I got your back or and your front, you know, and, and, uh, and I'm not going anywhere. When you need something from the, the pharmacy, I'll go get it from the pharmacy. If you can't go get your food, I'll go get your food. The person that does that is the person that loves you. They don't have to tell you they love you. See, that's the point. America, in, on, in, on, on many levels, became Babylon. And it, it became a place, because I live here, and also Western civilization, you might say, it became a place where all you do is talk about stuff, but you don't really do anything. You, you make a commitment, but you can break it, and it doesn't matter. You can either hurt the person who broke the commitment or let them go. But you can hurt them, you know, like in France or something. Or, you know, you, you can hurt people who don't keep their commitment romantically or something. In other words, that's all confusion. You can't love somebody really and hurt them in, in the first place. Uh, you know, un un unless you're defending yourself or you're arresting someone from uh, harming people. Other than that, you, you don't have any justification for hurting anybody. Somebody came over to your house, said something rude to you. you. You really don't have a right to attack them or nothing. You know, if you were engaged and the person you, you were engaged to ran off with somebody else, you don't have a right to hurt them. They, they, they say in France they had some laws that were actually on the books. On the books that, that you could hurt somebody and go, go to court and say they, we, were, we were in love and they, and they, and they ran off. And, I, and then the judge says, case dismissed. That's nonsense. And some of people are going to pay for that on Judgment Day. They're going to pay for hurting people who just had a change of heart. Sure, it was cold what they did on many levels, but a lot of people go through changes of heart. Probably almost everyone goes through a change of heart. It doesn't mean that they're evil. And furthermore, um, where's forgiveness and mercy? It's out the window. 
Maybe that's why France was attacked in World War I and World War II. No, I don't. Vive la France, parlez-vous français. No, you, you, the French people know that I, I, I know that all people are the same, essentially. There's no difference between human beings. Jeremiah, let's get to the lesson germane. Now, this is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We greet you in the only name given. We're already into 10 minutes into this video. I, I, sometimes I get a little tired on Saturday. I don't know why, but let's get going. He that loveth, he that taketh, he that findeth. Now let's let's look at this from a wisdom perspective first. I didn't mean to go here, but let's let's go wisdom. Number six in this ministry is called wisdom. Wisdom is you have the ability to make a decision. That's what it means. And here we have an ability to, to make a decision because the master said he that. How many times does the, the master introduce the concept of wisdom? All the time. Does he introduce wisdom more than he does um, coercing you, pushing you, and squeezing you into a direction? He sure does. That, that's easy to see. Here we had a commandment here in verse 5. And commanded them. That's not necessarily wisdom, is it? That's go now. However, when we get to loving him, he, he, he throws in he that. Oh, wait a minute. So the commandment is to go, but, the, but, but, but he's not going to force you to love him. Now, he does command to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you're commanded to obey the gospel or to fulfill the royal law. It might be a, very, uh, a, a, a more pro a proper term. He called it a commandment that you must fulfill the royal law. So that can get a little uh, deep there. I, I can go there, but let's let that go. What I want to say right now is, is he that is number one. He that, and he that, he that, he that, he that, and whosoever. Okay, stop right there. So those terms reveal a concrete will of yours. Volition. You, you, you can or you can't. I do or I don't. And whosoever shall give to drink. So now we're dealing with your volition and God wants you to have the ability to make a decision. He's obviously pushing you to make the right decision, and that right decision is to be wise and to be loving. Who is that wise and faithful servant? Who the Lord is going to approve. Who's the one that's going to make the right decisions here? He that does this by his own will. That's the point here. He that loveth means you don't have to love. That's the key. You choose who to love. The Bible says that God loved you first. That's why you loved him. But God, God can love you first, and you don't have to love him back. That's the point. And, and, and we were looking at your prime example here, which is Judas, uh, who also betrayed him in Matthew 10, 4. So he, he, he betrayed him, but he was loved, wasn't he? He sure was. Did Jesus love uh, Judas? Uh, duh. Did he, love, did, he, did he love him back? No. He hated him. So when John says we love, we love him because he loved us first, that's true. Uh, yeah, well, right on, bro. But it doesn't mean that you had to love back. It means that you decided to love back, which is a reasonable response. Isn't it reasonable? I, I think it is. My parents loved me. I loved them back. So that was a reasonable response. A lot of 
that Christians are going to have a reasonable response when they see the cross, and they're going to have a reasonable response. The reasonable response is, wow, that person wants to love me, and that person's love, and that person believes in the truth. Is that what I want? I don't want a life of sacrifice as love. I don't want it. A lot of people are going to decide that too. Even though they were loved, that's the point. For God so loved the world. Well, you've been loved. And the master's going to say, he that, he that, take it. So the first one is he that loveth father or mother more than me. Stop right there. Christianity is based upon you loving the Lord Jesus Christ just as much, obviously, or more than everybody around you. you, you yeah, he has to be the ruler of your heart. He has to be the one that, that, that you, have, you have decided to give your time, your devotion to. You are devout, and you are going to listen and study, and that's going to make you a winner here. But the Master is going to say that he that loveth Father more than me. So now he's going to, he, so, but, but, but let's leave it at, let's leave it at uh, he that loveth, period. Let's stop with, let's stop right there. Let, let's keep this positive. So now he that loveth and he that taketh. Okay, so now we have he that loveth and he that taketh. Okay, what, what's going on here? He that loveth me and he that taketh cross. There you go. He puts it in a negative frame. Let's put it in a positive frame. You can do that. He that loveth taketh cross. That's what he said. He that loveth me is he that taketh cross. And he's not just following after me and you're worthy of me. He says worthy of me twice. What does that mean? Well, it, it, it means, are you worth my time? You know, it's like going out on a date as a, as a, as a young adult seeking to get married, and you went out, and, and you went out with Frank or Cindy, whoever you are, of course, corresponding, and you found out that person's not worth your time. They're not worthy of you. There's not enough value in them to for you to participate with them. And the value is in denial, which is living bread. That's why I call this agape and living bread, because the Master is saying that loving him is taking up a cross. Taking up a cross is putting on a servant mind. Doing as commanded. That, that's what it means. That's what he said. Take up your cross. Take it up cross. There you go. Cross is a metaphor. You, you, you're not taking up a literal cross. It's a metaphor as to losing your life. Verse 39. He that loseth his life. That's the one that finds this life because you took up your cross. So he that loveth me taketh up his cross and loseth his life. And you've received me. And what's that translate into? We have a winner on our hands. The word is overcomer. The word is faithful. The word is child. The word is son. The word is true servant. There's a lot of words we can use. Nike, winner, going to heaven, you, you walk the narrow brick road, as John said, you're walking on the, on the, you know, the, uh, in the truth, and all these beautiful terms that apply to people who are valuable based upon their love service, which goes back to love service again. We're combining two subjects, and the name of and the name of the and the name of the lesson basically is love serve. I'm going to call it love serve. I, I put that down. I'm going to go ahead and make that permanent. 
Love serve. Because Paul puts those two words together and leave it to Paul to, to do that. In other words, I love, therefore I serve, and I'm going to serve because I love. That, that's all it is. Love serves. Love gets off its rear end and goes to work. That's what love does. And these gentlemen are going to work, and the Mass is saying that you're taking up your cross, denying your, you're denying yourself a lot of pleasures out there in Israel, and that makes you worthy of me. Worthy of me means that you love, and you're going to get out there and love. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and Luke 4, to bind up the brokenhearted, set at liberty those who are captive, uh, um, to be a light in, in darkness, the gospel has been preached to the poor, and on and on it goes with that concept of uh, getting out there and loving people, and the Spirit of the Lord is in you, to go and do that. that. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is basically there for. It's not there to necessarily make you happy and sit around and, and count uh, money or something. No, it's there for you to get out and make a difference and to join some sort of office and get busy. Now, the Lord may have you in limbo. I'm not trying to push uh, an office on you necessarily right now. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, these guys took three years before they got ready to go over here, right? They're this is still part of their preparation. This is not the Great Commission. This is what we, what we might call a local commission, kind of. But um, it's basically the same thing as the, as, the, as the Great Commission. It's the same thing. In the Great Commission, they go out to save, and Judas is gone. Now, now let's, let, let's look at this again. He that loveth is he that taketh, and he that loseth his life. For my sake, for the church purposes. That's how you find heaven. That's why I, I, I'm going to call this love, serve. Because what, what the master is saying is, there's love, serve, or no serve. Same thing Paul mentioned. It's the same context. You're going to get all your ducks lined up in a row here, or you ain't. That's it. You're going to give me your mind. You're going to concentrate. Love the Lord your God with all of your mind is required of you, by the way, in case you didn't know that. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right now, he's challenging them with their minds right now to focus. He's giving them quite a few things to do. Preach, heal, don't bring money, uh, knock on doors, uh, um, be gentle, be kind. Uh, if people don't listen to you, go. If they hurt you, don't you worry about it because I know every every hair of your head. And some of you, they may, may put to death. And, uh, and on and on it goes. Don't you worry about it. And, and, uh, and I didn't come here to make everybody's family all one, but the family is going to be divided on me. And which is the same thing that's a reference to this and also the end of the world kind of with the, uh, uh, which is the same way it was kind of with uh, in Hitler's day with the Hitler youth turning in Jews or something. People who know you may turn you in. That's the point. And, uh, and when, the, when the gospel comes, we're, we're going to divide families. We're going to divide everybody. That's what we're, we're going to do. People that want love and truth, they're going to come over here. We used to be in lies and, and hate. They're going to be transformed by the renewing of their mind. Born again. All things become new. Old things are passed away. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to come back to this on the next video. What I want to do in the next video, I want, to, I, want to, I want to go to, I want to let love serve go. Love serve or no serve? Uh, Paul says, cry, Abba, Father, and I say, or just cry. You can't cry, Abba, Father. I, I'm, I'm, I'm rejoicing in the ghost of Father, the love spirit, unless you're out there doing something according to what this is, which is take up your cross. Some people are going to, they're not going to take the cross. 
and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me. A lot of people are going to follow after Jesus Christ and they're not going to take up their cross. That's, that's on the negative side. You've met people probably in your life who are following after Jesus Christ and they've not put on a servant mind. They're not worthy of Jesus Christ, although they're following after him. You can usually tell by the way they dress and the way they talk. They talk about money a lot usually, or they, they, they talk about their material things a lot, or they're not dressed properly. Uh, those are people you can usually tell who are following after Jesus Christ. They're taking in everything they can get. They're generally selfish people, and they stare in the mirror, and they worship themselves. They're not worthy of Jesus Christ. The only people that are worthy of Jesus Christ are people who will fall on the stone and put it all on the line. And once, once he acknowledges, obviously, that you are definitely going to take up your cross, then, he, you, he, then, then you're worthy of him. There you go. Do you, want, do you want somebody hanging around you who doesn't really care about you? Then no, you don't. You shouldn't. That's unwise. That's, that's a Jerry Springer show, maybe, right? Billy's my friend. He drinks, he doesn't work, and we hang out. You, you might want to dump that friend. That, that's, that's the point. Unless you're just like them. But if you're a decent person who works and whatever, you don't want people around you like that. All you do is drag you down, right? They might hurt you and laugh at you at the same time. You, you don't know what people, wild people are going to do. So you leave wild people alone. Why can't God leave wild people alone? People who follow, follow after you. I, I had people come over to my house when I was growing up. I found out that they weren't friends. They, they talked about you. They hurt people. And, uh, you know, and, and, and they, they, they were following after, you know, friendship. They, they weren't friends. They were following after. That's what follow after means. You're a straggler. You don't love the people you're hanging around. Let's move on. I'm let that go. Um, I want to get back to this because I want to say a few more things. This is huge here. I go over this uh, uh, ten times a year. I, I've gone over this this area of your Bible a hundred thousand times. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but no. This is this is where this is the first time that Master said, uh, "He that love he that loveth me." That's the first time he said it. in the Gospels. So common sense to tell you that this is where a monster is. This is where you should focus a lot, right there. This is the overarching everything. If you, if you miss this, you might miss the party. If I read to heal the sick and cleanse the rich and, cl and cleanse lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give, well, I, I might get a good, a good grip of what, what this gospel is about. Uh, but, but, but when I go to 37, 38, 39, and 40, oh, big snap, oh, bango, you, you, you just encapsulated everything. You, you really got what, what's going on here. These are details, heal the sick, go into the city. That, that's uh, explicating or delineating. That, you're, you're spelling it out. But for you to understand and comprehend what's going on, you need to go to 37, 38. That's where it all starts and ends. Now, it doesn't mean that, that go to the lost sheep of Israel is not living bread. That's not the point. It's just, a, it's just a living bread starts really in 37, 38, 39. And, and, when, when, and when Jesus says, go and do this, that's your, that is you loving. That's the point here. I'm going to shut down here. That's you loving in action. See? When you talk with a servant mind, that's loving in action. That's what the master is saying. Not only are you serving, but you're talking servant. You're talking, I, I took up my cross. You're talking, fall on the stone. See, that, that's what's going on here.
I'll be right back. We're, we're going to get into, um, I'm going to look at um, number one here. We're going to go back to the number one lesson, which is agape and beauty. I'll be right back. Marinoff. <laughs> 